I immediately already don't like that I can't see who is on this without um, without seeing it on the chat, I guess. Hmm. And welcome to my my three viewers, my three unnamed viewers. Hmm. I'm going to wait for like a few minutes until after six because I feel like People are always late and people have to connect, you know, so maybe I'll start at like 6.05 instead of 6 because I'm a liar. I guess I could play music. That's probably an option. So it's not just silence while we sit here and wait. Elevator music. I guess I should make sure I have all my my things in order here. All right.
It's funny, people are like texting me. Oh, thank you, Farad, thank you. <laughs> um, it's funny, people are texting me about it when y'all can just go online because I've been bothering everybody about it the last day. <laughs> All the answers you need are going to be in the video with me. Oh, thank you. Yay, hi, Tish. I'm excited. You're honestly, you two are definitely part of the reason I even decided to do it because you guys were like, oh, oh my God, hi, Anna. Um, you guys were like, oh, I, I really want you to do it. So thank you. Thank you for the motivation because I don't know if I would have done it without you. Oh yeah, so if you, since you three are here already, or I guess whoever is here, I can't tell. Um, the documents or the files are linked below. So if you are on a computer or you're near your computer and you actually wanna follow along, um, I have a raw file, or it's actually a Photoshop file because that was the easiest way for me to, to drop it in the uh, Dropbox link. And then I have the little lightning bolt file there as well if you wanna download it and follow along. I won't know if you want to, but it'll be there forever basically. I'll just leave those in the Dropbox, so even if you want to watch it right now, um, but you don't want to follow along or you can't, it can be it can be downloaded tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now. So do what you will. I'm listening to music. I don't know because I have these headphones in. I bought this really nice microphone and it's like too good. So I had to end up using just my headphones for the microphone for the audio. And I'm playing music, but I don't know if you guys can hear it too or if it's just, just in the headphones. So if you can hear it and it's like too loud, just like put that in the chat or something because I won't know. And then you won't be able to hear anything I say. My mom is here, hi mom, <laughs> and you don't know how to chat on YouTube. Well, if you're on your phone, I'm pretty sure you like swipe up, I think. I can't be sure, but if you're on a computer, I think it'll be on the right, on the right side. Thanks mom, I hope that you're learning. You should download the files and actually do it with me. This is a good opportunity to learn. All right, I am gonna literally start for real in two minutes. So hopefully we got everybody that at least is interested in seeing it from the start. And if not, it'll be available like I keep saying. I changed the color. So for those of you who have seen the, um, the original version of this file, the background wasn't as vibrant of a pink. I did change this already in this file that you have as well, just because it would kind of make it easier. Um, I also assume that most people know how to change the color of stuff in Photoshop, but if you don't, let me know and I can do another live session or just do a quick YouTube tutorial on how to do that. I actually do technically have one already. Um, it is one that it was before I knew how YouTube SEO works. And so it is kind of hidden in there, but it's like multicolored products in Photoshop or something that teaches you how to change the color of stuff really easy in Photoshop. So. If you want to know how to do it, it is there. It is available to you. And we're going to start in one minute. I'm very excited, actually, because I never get to talk about what I'm doing to most people because most people don't understand Photoshop. So this is going to be a good time. Oh, yeah, I need to make sure that I keep the chat available because that's the only way that I'll be able to know if you guys have a question, I guess.
So for the new people that are joining, because I am seeing that more people are joining, the files are linked below in the Dropbox, Dropbox link. So the raw file or the Photoshop file for the photo and the little lightning bolt in the after um, are both linked in that Dropbox. Feel free to download them now, later, whenever. I'll keep them up there so you can follow right along if you would like to. Um, and we will get started here pretty much right now. Nobody said that they can hear music, and so as long as you guys can't hear it, that's all that matters, or it's not too loud for you to hear what I'm saying. Wow. Wow, Mom. My mom just texted me saying that she's leaving, but she'll come back later. How dare you? I'm just kidding. I appreciate your... A few minutes of watch time, Mom. I really do. Ah. Oh, I kind of want to get my AirPods, but I just don't know. I just don't know if they'll work. So, um, also to start, I edit and do most things on a drawing tablet. Um, so... My workflow might be a little bit different than yours, but if you do typically use a mouse, I can tell you kind of how to make that a little bit easier. Um, this is the tablet I use. It is the Wacom Intuos Pen Tablet Pro Medium. This is only the medium size, which is mind-blowing to me because it's so big that it's almost like too big for any surface that I have. Um, but this is super helpful and expedites the process a ton. Charles, if you're watching, I hope that you're enjoying yours. And if you're following along, I hope that you're using it because I love these. Um, but it, super, super, super helpful. Expedite your retouching process for sure a lot, but really any editing. And if you want to start working with compositing or really just anything in Photoshop that's a little bit outside of like your standard graphic design or something. Um, I would recommend getting one of these. The smaller tablets I did see at Best Buy I think yesterday for like $70 so they are fairly affordable and honestly people do sell them online used a lot so I would recommend you looking there first if you're not super concerned with like a warranty and all of that. All right, so I'm just gonna actually go ahead and get started on the little tutorial here. So for everyone that is here, um, if you can just put like who you are in the chat just so I can actually address you and say thank you and hello. Um, but if you don't want to, I understand, that's no problem. Yeah, graphic design. And if you wanna even draw it all in Photoshop, obviously, but like, if you want to add any of your own like illustrations to your designs, 1000% would recommend. I actually do really like this version of this of the tablet. I think this one's a little bit more expensive. This one I think I paid like 175, maybe they retail for like 150 or uh, 250. Um, but I like having these buttons on the side because I can change my brush size and like rotate the screen and I can zoom in and out with just this little touchpad wheel there. And so I'm saving a lot of like back and forth to my computer with keyboard shortcuts and stuff. But anyway, yeah, seriously. Yeah, that's a good idea, Anna. Let's tell everybody that, that's a great idea. Okay, so I'm just gonna get started, I think, with the tutorial and I'm gonna turn, oof. Okay, I'm gonna just stop looking at messages. If you're texting me to get on the live, I'm sorry, you can do this on your own. I've posted the link, you will get here. So, to start, if you're looking, if you have the file or whatever, once you've downloaded them, this is going to be the um, file that I'm starting with. This is a um, key fob stun gun. So the product that I shot for a company called Secret Slayer, check them out, secretslayer.com. Um, they sell really cool gadgets, kind of geared towards women in self-defense, but they look very normal and then... Um, they're used as weapons or as, as ways for self-defense. They have like lighters that are pepper spray. They have like little cigarettes that are little knives. I really like this key fob stun gun because seeing it in person, I actually was like, wow, you would believe that is just somebody's key fob um, to their car. A very bougie woman with her pink buttons, but still. So to start, what we're going to do to make this look like it's floating, the first thing we obviously need to do is get rid of this little, this little arm here. Um, 
There's a lot of ways to do it, obviously, as well, but I think the easiest way to me is to um, start with the clone stamp. All right, let's just make sure the chat is good. Okay, nobody's as asking any questions yet. This is good. And I just want to make sure really quick that my thing's looking good still. All right, perfect. So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over here. When you open yours, it'll just say layer one, um, and it'll be this. I always like to duplicate the layers so I'm not working destructively. What that means is that I'm not editing directly onto my raw or my starting file. So if I make a mistake or if I really need, if I end and I'm like, wow, I really want to start over, I can just kind of back off of the layers versus having to start all over with a new file because I've edited the original. So I'm going to go to layer one, copy two, and we can... We can label these. I always recommend labeling your layers, but I never do it. So when you see me not doing it immediately after I do this one, that's why. Um, we'll just have this be our base layer. And what I'm going to do here is zoom in on this, on this meeting point right here between the object and whatever is holding the object up. So um, also I probably should shout out my favorite studio moms and the best studio in Detroit, in my opinion, which is, oh God, I shouldn't have hit the microphone. That's probably, probably pretty loud. Um, but in my opinion is Gerard and Bella Vendor studio. They are based in Hamtramck. If you haven't checked out even their website, just give them a quick look, gerardbellavender.com. Um, they let me come in and shoot. Well, not let me. I paid them for the studio to go shoot um, in there. And this is the result, and I got to use all of their gear, whatever backdrops I needed, anything that I needed, they had. So just as a heads up, if you haven't heard me spout nonsense about them yet already, now you have. Anyway, we're going to zoom in here. They had this nice little clamp arm that clamped onto the table and then just kind of like zipped out. Um, and so that's what I just taped this little key fob to. Ooh, okay. You've had to do with something similar. And actually, this is a cool one too because since uh, because these are both black on black, so it'll be an interesting and fun way to learn how to do that. At least my way. Obviously, there's a million ways to do this, and honestly, my way might not be the most efficient, but we're going to learn it anyway. All right. Quick pause just because I have two other text messages of people saying, can you wait with just one more second um, to keep going? So I'm just going to take a quick pause. But while I do that, because they're just going to miss the lighting part, um, I'm going to talk about the lighting really quick. Um, the lighting setup, again, thank you, Michelle Gerard. All of this that's coming out of my mouth and brain, I learned from her. Just so you know, she's amazing. If you have any questions, please let them know because they are working on a uh, full course. And if you haven't seen their work, check it out as well. It's super, super amazing. Honestly, wish I was them, but I am learning. So in terms of lighting, what we did here was um, they have the pro photo um, strobe lights. I probably should have looked at the models that they actually have, but they have pro photos. And I set this, if I'm looking, if you're looking at the table that you're going to be shooting, we had the light to the left. So if I'm looking at it to the left, if I'm the object to the right, we had it sharp on the left um, with a strobe at 100%, I believe, um, with a gridded box on there to soften the light just a little bit. I didn't want it to be too harsh, but I did want to have um, a good shadow just so that way you could see it was floating. This one's a little bit different because you can tell it's floating because of the little um, key wrist thing. Um, but that was the only light that I was using and all I had was a little um, reflector on the right on my right the objects left so just to get a little bit of bounce on that other side from the harsh light on the right um, made it really easy to light this it actually it was way easier than I thought and I did go back later and do a little bit of extra work in terms of lighting um, in Photoshop which I can go through really quick at the end so anyway I've waited a couple seconds I did the best filibuster time wasting I could for these couple people. I hope you're here. We're going to keep moving. So now that you're on your base layer, I'm going to zoom in here to this connect point. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the clone stamp. And people might say, well, obviously everybody knows the clone stamp. Uh, it's not, this isn't a lesson. It's going to be, it's going to be, just wait. So um, again, I'm just using my tablet here to hold option down. You can just select whatever point. So whatever point I select is going to be the starting point that um, is going to be cloned. And I'm actually not going to go right along the edge here, but I'm going to come kind of close. 
and just fill this out with that color. I made a little bit of a mistake, which happens all the time, so I'm just gonna Command-Z undo. Up here, because I have a tablet, I have pressure sensitivity on, which means even if this is at 100% and my pressure isn't all the way, it's not going to change anything. So I'm actually gonna take that off pressure sensitivity and I'm gonna put the flow up to 100% really quick. And I'm gonna go back and do that again really fast. So I'm just gonna pick a point, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and I'm just gonna make a little line through here. That's what I mean when I say it doesn't have to be perfect because stuff like that happens. And so we're just gonna create a separation between the object and the arm entirely. This is the part that I think that y'all might consider cheating, but it'll make your life way easier. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to our lasso tool here. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna select around this part of the arm that's no longer touching our object. And you wanna make sure that you don't get too close to this line because what we're going to do here is we're going to content aware fill. If you're not familiar with this, you are gonna be and it's gonna change your life. Um, so just make sure you don't get too close to this black here or this black edge because it will, it will think, oh, I need to add black into this, into this selection because it's being aware of what's around it. So once you have that selected, go into edit up here, fill, and then I leave mine just on content aware fill. I leave this all the same. Press OK, and it's going to load, and we're going to see what happens on its own. This often gets the job done for me, but we'll see how it goes. Sometimes it's a surprise. All right, so immediately that's way better than it was five seconds ago, and that took like two seconds. So if we just look um, at the before and after from like those two little moves, so much of the work is done already. This part is kind of the part that you would assume is... Um, kind of the part everybody knows. But I'm going to go in again with the clone stamp here and select something that's a little bit brighter because I wanna make sure that I lighten this spot up here. And I'm going to turn my pressure sensitivity back on and bring down the flow a little bit, a little bit because I don't need it on 100%. And just kind of fix that there, just to blend that a little bit more. And then we're gonna go in a lot closer. So it's kind of hard to see, but you can see the edge of this black key fob right along there. And this is where the tablet comes really, really in handy because you can actually draw the line you need to versus trying to take a mouse or a trackpad and like drag your finger to where it needs to be. It's definitely possible, like I said, but it's a lot easier with the tablet. This is also a Topo Chico. My mother thought it was a beer earlier, so I just want to be clear. Get the product placement to make sure that everybody sees it. And now we're going to go in with the clone stamp again, but we're going to have the um, brush edges be a lot harsher. So actually I'm going to just kind of keep going a little bit more on this just to dull that down a little bit more. And I'm just pressing option and selecting every time that you see the crosshair switch to this little picker. I'm just pressing the option button. Um, I believe on a Windows that would be the alt button. So now that I've cleaned that up a little bit, if we zoomed out like really, really far and you didn't know what you were looking for, like you could get away with that if that was like really small and you didn't clean up the edge. Like it already looks like a floating object, which is nice because it was fast. Um, but if you want it to look perfect, like most clients do, and most of you I'm sure would, um, I'm gonna go up here and change to that hard brush. I'm gonna keep the flow pretty high um, on this, maybe not exactly 100, and I'm gonna turn my pressure sensitivity off again. And so what I'm gonna do is instead of picking like out here, I'm gonna pick the pink that's right below the part that I wanna paint. And I'm just gonna do that. I'm going to do it one more time. And I'm going to keep doing that for a couple more until I can just draw the entire line of what I want. So let's just do this for now. Okay. 
So this is a little bit more difficult because it is black on black. Um, it would be a lot easier if it was something that was like silver on black, like some of the other ones I did. But I wanted to show you kind of the hardest version of doing this. So that way when it's easy, it's really easy. Um, when it's a separate color, you can kind of just cut it out really easily like you did um, with the first part of the arm. But since it's the same color, it's a lot harder to select. So that's why I'm going in and um, adding a little bit more refinement, a little bit more finesse to this one. And sometimes I'll take the edge of the actual object just to clean up the edge. Oopsies, let's do way smaller. Like this little white reflection I didn't really want there. So I'll have these two meet together. There we go. So as you zoom out, you see that almost nothing is there. We had the arm. Yes, it is. That's exactly it. Honestly, a lot of the things in Photoshop, what makes them hard is just not knowing the order of the steps. Once you know the order of the steps and you kind of have an understanding, obviously, of what each step is and does, it's like you can apply this stuff to everything. So let's go back to our, our guy here. So honestly, he's looking pretty good. Um, this, to me, maybe has a little bit, a little bit of stuff I want to clean up. Again, I'm still editing on this duplicate layer. Like, let's say I was like, oh my God, I wish that I didn't do what I did. I want to start over. I can just delete that layer or turn it off and then just copy it again or do whatever I need to do. So now that we've done that, I'm going to fix this up a little bit more just because you can see that this is a little bit darker here. Let's turn the flow way down, make it a softer brush, just because I'm almost using this more so like it's like the dodge tool versus um, actually trying to clone what's over there. I'm using it more for like the brightness versus, versus the color or the texture. All right, so this is a great first start. The next thing I would do and what I actually did for the client, um, thanks Jana for giving me something to do this tutorial for, is the, I got rid of these shadows. I thought at first I liked them and in the example I used as my like inspiration photo, I really liked them. But for something like this, it ended up just making it look kind of sloppy. So this is easy enough. There's no reason to make it harder than it is. You can just take, for the most part, you can take the spot retouch tool. So for this one, I'm just gonna do that. That's super, super easy. And for this, it's gonna be similar to what we did with that arm up above. I'm gonna take the clone stamp tool really fast clone over here, make a good separation. Maybe I'll do this. Make some good separation there. And then I can take the, I can just take the spot retouch because it's so small. Yeah, that is a good idea too. Um, I did that actually for one of the other ones. I think it was the, oh yeah, there's an item that's not going to be released until next year. And I ended up doing that, um, putting the tape between the object and the holder because I was like, why was I just not creating a separation to begin with? But it is still super easy in Photoshop. So Anna, shout, shout out you though, because you're giving everybody the good tips in the comments. So I hope that everybody's looking at them because that, that's a good one. Um, okay, so. This is what we started with. This is where we're at already. It's like basically where you want it. It definitely does look like it's floating already, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add that little um, bolt of light here because it's a stun gun. I want people to know that it was a stun gun. So I was like, why not put a little bolt there? Um, so let me grab that file really quick. Here we go. That is also in the Dropbox, this little bolt here. It is in the Dropbox, so if you are looking for it or whatever, she there. And so I'm just going to automatically rasterize this. If you want to do really anything to your objects, I just rasterize them. I don't really use smart filters that much, so I don't really need them to be smart objects. All right, so. What I'm going to do here first is make it smaller because if we zoom out, definitely not the right size. 
So what I'm going to do to start is obviously make it smaller. If we look at the actual item here, and I got to look at it in person, so it's a little bit easier for me to understand where it should go. These uh, little bolt things, these little screws here, hold where the electricity zzz in the middle, wherever it buzzes in the middle, that's where it is. Um, I'm going to dramatize it a little bit just because when I shot this, just to see what it would look like, it's kind of small and I want it to look a little bit more theatrical because it's basically an ad. So I want to make sure that it looks like, oh, I know exactly what that is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it the size, right around the size between the two screws on the top. And obviously you can rotate just by bringing your cursor over here until you see, I just pointed to it like you'd see me point. Um, turns into that little curvy guy here. So this will move it. Once you come outside, you can turn it. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just so you can reach to here. All right, and I'm gonna zoom out again. So right now what I'm doing, we're making a very, very basic composite, but it is still a composite. And having the understanding and the basics of this um, is gonna be really useful for when you can wanna composite other stuff. So let's see. I like it, but it definitely doesn't look necessarily real. And I also don't think it looks bright enough. Um, I think that little charge of light or that little zap of electricity would be a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do first is I'm actually gonna add a curve to this little lightning bolt. Because the edge of this curves, I want that to naturally mimic it or else it does look out of place. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select it, make sure that you've selected it. Sometimes if you have things that are stacked on top of each other, it's going to pick whatever you're clicking that's on top. Um, so just make sure that if you select this, you click one of these, these little squares, and it'll make and then it will put you in the mode of only transforming this layer versus one you might accidentally click instead. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and press um, free transform, which we're already there. And then I'm going to press warp. And so what I can do with warp is that I have all these little nodes here and I can use them to warp how this looks. Um, so I'm going to actually drag these ones up here. And we're drag these ones here to make it a little rounder. And I was a little bit more, I was more refined when I was doing this for my client. Um, but, and so I'm gonna use those little center points of those screws kind of as our anchor point, just because it makes sense. Even though it's not necessarily how the object works, you get the idea of what it is. And let's see, and I don't want this to be too, let's see here, put that there. Put that there. And this is kind of just like you play around with it until you think it looks good. There's no like right or wrong way to do this. In terms of shaping it, there's not really a huge like, there's a right or wrong way. <laughs> Me being anal, I'm just gonna sit here and keep doing it. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Oh God, I wish I didn't, okay. And all, but already that looks a lot more real than it did when it was just flat straight across the object because in theory, if somebody was on their phone and like really wanted to zoom in, they'd be like, oh, at least they're kind of touching the, the point. So it kind of makes sense. Um, there we go, that's looking good. And there's a few different ways you can do this. I'm actually gonna do this in a way that's similar to like dodging and burning. So now I'm gonna just work on kind of fixing the light to be how I want it. For these photos, I really wanted the light to be a little bit more dramatic and I really wanted that light that's coming in from the side to hit it really sharp. So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna dodge and burn the photo. You hear that a lot um, in retouching, but I use it all the time in terms of just like literally anything if I want the lighting to be a little bit different. So I'm gonna actually bring that down and I like it kind of dark like that over here, over here, but I'm just gonna, I'm just not gonna leave it. I'm gonna do it the long way. Um, so instead of just leaving this, I'm going to create that curves layer. So what I did, I just realized I didn't even talk through it. I'm just gonna start over. I just got too excited about dodging and burning and I should actually talk through it. Okay, so come over here. You have, um, we have all these options here. Delete, new layer, create a group, uh, adjustments, layer mask and effects. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create an adjustment layer. There are two ways to do this. There's a long way and there's a short way. So I'm just gonna teach you the short way because it's way easier. Coming down here to the bottom right, we have our adjustment layers. So this is different than if you were in 
um, this layer and if you went to images adjustments if you go into here and go to curves it's going to apply that adjustment only to the layer that you're on so what's nice about down here is that it's creating a new layer that you can edit on so we're going to create a new look curves layer and see how I can drag this down I can drag this down but I can turn it off if we went the other way we wouldn't be able to turn it off anymore. We'd have to undo all those steps. So this is another thing when I say don't work destructively, this is what I'm talking about. So let's turn that curves layer back on, but let's chill on it here. And I'm gonna start making the shadows. I'm gonna dodge and burn the shadows really quick. So I'm gonna bring just a center point really wherever down. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to invert the layer. So I'm gonna do that by clicking Command or Control I. And now it looks like it's gone because I've turned our layer mask black. And so what I want to do is I want to bring shadows into the photo. So I'm going to get my brush tool, which you can just get to by pressing B, or it is over on the left for most people, unless your toolbars are way different. And I'm going to come up to the top here. I'm going to turn pressure sensitivity on. If you are using a mouse or a trackpad, I would recommend turning the, the opacity and the flow down, not just the flow. Um, but since I have this pen, my opacity is fine to stay at 9. And I'm going to go way down. I'm going to go down to like 6, 7, 6 to 10 is usually kind of where I live. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. You can do this by pressing the left and right bracket on the keyboard, going up here and changing the side, the size. Um, I have that little wheel on my trackpad, so it's super fast, or on my little tablet thing. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to, first of all, make sure the brush is white because I'm painting on a black layer mask. You can do that by pressing X. You can switch between those two colors. And then what you're going to do here is I'm just going to kind of start painting in the shadows where I want them. It's a little bit delayed because I'm streaming, so that's fine. But I just want to add a little bit more drama to this here. That's probably fine. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make another curves layer, but I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make a curves layer for highlights. So if we were going to name these, since we're making this darker, that would be our burn layer. And since we're going to make stuff lighter on this layer, we're gonna, that'll be our dodge layer. We're going to bring up just another middle point again. You don't need to make crazy curves on all of these because your only your main goal for the dodge and burn layers is only to change the luminance or how bright or how dark something is. So it doesn't matter about the colors. You don't need to switch. Like you don't need to do the S curve in this. It's only for making stuff a little bit brighter. So again, I'm going to invert the layer by clicking Command or Control I. And I'm going to bring this down even lower. With highlights, I tend to start a little bit lower because I feel like they're a little bit more noticeable. So I'm going to start at like four. And I'm just going to brighten this up a little bit here, create a little bit more dramatic light. And, and again, this is a little, this is more refined when I did it for the client, but since this is just a quick tutorial, I'm just going to do it kind of light. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to bring up my flow quite a bit. I'm going to go over top of this lightning bolt. And I got a little overboard right here, so I'm going to press X to switch back to black. This is what's really nice about layer masks as well. Because I'm painting black, whatever was on that layer mask that was visible before isn't anymore. Except for I made it a little too dark. So, let's do this. There we go. So that's fixed now. And already that looks a lot nicer than um, it did before. Before it looked really flat, and even with those two layers, it definitely looks like it has a little bit more dynamic lighting now. And I like that, especially with this little blue bolt. Um, it adds a little bit of like, oh, that makes sense that there's more light coming out of that way. The last step that I would really go through, I would go in um, and I would kind of add a little extra oomph and highlight to these hits on this side of the key fob here, um, if I was if I was me, which I am. So just to add a little bit of um, extra contrast there, I also added a little bit of brightness here. Just because I wanted to see the logo a little bit more. Let me go add a little bit more white, a little more highlight, I guess not white. 
And the last step that I really would do um, is I would merge all these letter layers and make that little blue bolt a little bit brighter and a little glowier. So how I'm going to not merge all of these but create a layer with all of them on it is Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E. And that is going to create a new layer with all of the visible layers that you had currently. So now I can just turn this one on by itself. I can group these if I want because this is kind of like my, my first phase of my photoshopping and grouping. And in my layer, I'm going to go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. There might be a different way to do this, but this just to me is the easiest way to do it. So this is why I do it this way. If there is an easier way and you know, like please let me know because I'd prefer to be efficient. So this looks just kind of like Lightroom. If you're familiar with Camera Raw, I think all your raw images open up into it when you like open them in Photoshop. And I'm gonna come over here to my radial filters. I'm gonna zoom in on this little bolt here. And I'm gonna make like just a little circle. I'm gonna move it over top of the bolt. This might be a little bit big, we'll have to see. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to up the exposure a little bit because I want a little bit more brightness. I'm going to try to play with the temperature a little bit just to see if that kind of makes that blue light get a little brighter. And I think I'm gonna have the blue a little bit darker. I'm gonna bring up the highlights a little bit, bring up the whites a little bit, just because it's really adding that little zap to it. And the clarity's already up, must be from last time, but I wanna up the clarity and I'm going to de down the dehaze. So that actually gives it a little bit more of like a glow. If you go too far, obviously it like doesn't look good. But if you come down just a little bit, maybe like negative five, um, it looks pretty good. So now if we want to get out of there, this to me is obviously a little bit too much. So let's see here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I don't want to have like this crazy, crazy brightness. Here we go. It's a little bit still too much right here. I don't want it to be obvious that I Photoshopped it. Like my, my goal in Photoshop always is to not, to make it look like it wasn't Photoshopped. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come over to this eraser right here and I'm just going to like calm that down a little bit, calm it down. There we go. And I'm going to turn all these back on just so we can kind of see what we've gone through so far. All right. So already, this, this is what we. This is what it looked, looked like before. It still looks really good. Um, for the most part, it looks fine with the bolt. But I added that little bit of glow, and I think it just makes it a little bit more noticeable and a little bit more believable that it's actually there. It could be shaped a little bit better. It is shaped better on the one that I did for the client, but I didn't want to take a long time on it because I would have. Um, and that's basically it for that. It's super easy. Um, it's easier than you one would think, I should say. I wouldn't say it's super easy, but if you're familiar with social, uh, with social, with Photoshop, and um, you wanna do that, it's fairly simple, and I think that you got it. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, Anna, you've been killing it in the comments, but if anybody else has questions, it seems like that's the best way to do it. People have been texting me, but I'm not looking at it because I, <laughs> because I am trying to do this. So I hope this helped you. If it did, let me know. Thank you for watching. Also, I hope you had fun. It was actually way more fun than I thought it would be. So yeah, like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs sometime in the next like few months would be awesome. So if you watched and you liked and you learned something, if you learned anything at all, even if you knew how to do this, like and subscribe and I hopefully we'll do this again. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks.